that at the end of the day, if you want more for your life, you got to do it. Yeah. You can't expect somebody, you just can't get hope that you're going to get lucky. A uh, real talk with a realtor and a mortgage guy. I got my man, Corey Smith here from CMG yes, Financial. And then of course, myself, yes. Walter Davis with Keller Williams Professionals here in Spring, Texas. As always, Core, what's going on? Nothing much, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's, it's, it's a different market we're looking at. You know what I'm saying? It's some, some, some different type of clients we're looking at. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, we just rolling right on along, getting people inside houses, getting them to live the American dream. Yes, yes. It's funny how that market done, done flipped on us a little bit already. I mean, it ain't flipped. If you ain't the person that's watching the market all the time, it, people don't really know. But we noticed those little small intricacies that been flipped on the market, like yep. things like days on the market. I can already tell. I'm like, okay, the the 50 offers deal on any single house is not happening yep. anymore. You yep. know, I mean, you still have your good ones. I mean, the one there's still some houses out there that warrant 10, 15 offers. Yeah. You know the solid ones in solid locations. You know what I'm saying? Those are kind of going to always be a little bit of a dog fight. But now you know you you back to dealing with you know maybe one or two other offers as opposed to fifteen of the offers. Yes, yes. Which I see that as a as a semi undercover blessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because now, for, at least for my buyers, don't get me wrong. When I'm on the seller side helping my my owners. It's a great thing, but for my buyers, you know what I mean. Sometimes it, it's the exact opposite, and for someone that works with both, you know, it, it can be it can be a little taxing sometimes for me. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. You know, but what you're seeing over there on the mortgage side, anything? I, you know, I read some stuff recently. You know, I always kind of keep up on the mortgage side of it, and um, I've been looking at those fat. You know. The Fannie Mae, the Freddie Mac, the you know these guys are starting to change some of those projections a little bit of, yep. of going into the first quarter now that we stabilized them a little bit. Is there anything you seeing on your end that you think that uh, everybody should uh, hear about? Man, I think a lot of things are changing all the time, and uh, and you're saying your situation for last month could have possibly changed. You're saying this month just because of the new rules and stuff that they have coming about. Um, but what I am seeing as far as the market goes is I am seeing a, uh, there's been a little bit of an incline, uh, incline as far as rates go ahead of the predicted rate increase that's going to go on at the early part of 2022. So um, I think for a lot of people that's doing a down payment assistance, you would think, okay, well, look, the rates are going up and down, but down payment assistance, the rates are actually going up as far as those go, uh, which I don't think a lot of people actually kind of know about and just know that as the interest rate starts to go up then you'll say it you know, what you qualify for essentially you know goes down a little bit yeah and it especially hurts the people that that aren't necessarily as prepared as far as saving money because mm -hmm. if you don't save enough money you have to try to take more assistance if you take more down payment assistance your interest rate is higher which in turn lowers you how much you qualify for mm -hmm. so you know, when people think of programs, they think of, oh, man, I ain't got to come to the table with any money to buy a house. Well, you know what I'm saying? You still got to come to the table and have a little bit of money to be able to purchase a home. And you definitely don't want to be trying to take as much assistance as you can get because that's going to hurt how much house you can qualify for. So especially yeah. if you got champagne taste, you definitely <laughs> want to make sure you got some fun saved up so you can get what you want. You don't have to sacrifice. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, you hit on a good point when you really talk about, how, you know, on the real estate side, we talk about that as the affordability index. Yep. But a lot of people, they just not starting to hear that term affordability right. index. But that's uh -huh. because the interest rates have been low for so long. You know, we're going on, yep. what, two years at sub, yeah. sub fours? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think what, what, what we're saying and what is important for people to get from this last snippet we just talked about was is that it's still a good time to buy yep. but it's you always gotta a good time be to aware of your numbers you gotta be aware yeah. of where you are because if you're a person then that has champagne taste and yep. 
which means you want to spend more money, then that means yep. you're going to have to save some more money because yep. as the interest rates go up, yep. if you don't have that extra to offset, then it's going to push your purchase price down. Yep. Because you you know, and, and a lot of people ask me, you know, uh, they get confused. Well, why, why does it push my purchase price down? Well, because it's all about ratios, right? It's all about yep. percentages. And really, yep. if we just break it down to brass tax, <laughs> let's uh-huh. break it down to brass tax, it comes down to monthly note. When you, when, we, when, you, when, Corey, when you go into putting that note together, you might come out originally and say, okay, you can afford $1,800 a month, right? right? Well, as the interest rate goes up, that's pushing that up. Or let's say yeah. even the interest rate stays stable, but that that program that's giving you some money, you mm-hmm. need more money in that program, which pushes your interest rate up. Right. Now, now you'll know that ain't no longer 18. Now it's 1850, 1900, right. 1950. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Which exactly. then means we can't buy the same. If you only, you know, if you was at the top end, <laughs> right, <Yep. laughs> at 18, that means we got to now push the purchase price down further in order to yep. accomp- you know, accommodate Com- that interest uh-huh. rate growth. Does that Absolutely. make sense? 100%. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily think about that. And especially the biggest thing is this. Student loans and car payments are the two biggest things that hurt Ooh. people the most. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people go out there and you get these expensive cars with this seven, eight hundred dollar note, six hundred dollar mm-hmm. note. And if you're not making that much, you have to understand there's so much of a piece of the pie that you can have. And mm-hmm. if your car note takes up a large chunk of that pie and when that pie being your income and it, it takes up much of that, you don't have much left for the house. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying when you want this, oh, I want this you know, two story, you know, uh, 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 2,500 square foot bedroom. And I gotta be in, you know, this part of town or whatever the case may be. You have to understand that you're saying all this stuff plays into, plays into the, to the actual piece of the pie. So when you're going out there, ideally you want to get your house first before you go out there and get that car. No making excuses about, man, I had to, I had to go out here and get this, get this BMW. I had to go out here and get this Lexus. Because I needed a car, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now you got this large monthly payment. Now you can't qualify for the house that you wanted to qualify for. Yes. Because what I cannot stress to clients enough is that the process of purchasing a home is 100% nothing like purchasing a car. You purchase a car, they don't go in deep into, you know, how much you can, how much you can get this, that, and the third. You know, let me take a look at your finance. Oh, they don't oh, look at that oh, income rate. Even dig into, even dig into like, like how many hours do you work a week? Right. Like, they don't do hourly. None they, of that. Like, oh, you, you. Oh, I know they say this is forty hours, but you only work thirty-seven hours. You right. I mean? Exactly. That's exactly. The detail. Yeah. That's the detail that goes into it that most people don't necessarily think about. Um, and you have to think about that type of stuff when you, especially when you're trying to purchase a home, and especially if you're of that caliber where you got to have a certain status that you're trying to show. So my house has to look a certain way. My house has to be, it has to be new. It has to be this, that, and the third. Well, if you know you got that champagne taste and you want to get that house first before you go out and worry about trying to get that that, that dream car that you've been been thinking about. Well, and you know what? I'm going to unpack that a little bit. You know, when you think about, you know, I I start to think about why we come across this because obviously I can feel it in your voice. You've had a couple of these clients recently. (laughs) More than a couple. (laughs) (laughs) but let's unpack it a little bit the reason you know people need to understand the reason why you can afford that bmw you know and you ain't you living in an apartment in your mindset is because you're not paying a mortgage right and in the car dealer's mindset they saying well that's a rental so they're not even really counting the apartment money the way we count mortgage money right right Exactly. And so when they go to finance, they're like, cool, here you go. Here's $850 a month yeah. for the yeah. next five years, right? Yeah. And then they reverse it. And then guess what happens? Your mindset says, I don't want to have this BMW or Mercedes sitting in this apartment parking lot. Yeah. I need to go buy a house. Right. But the problem with that is, is now you got an $850 note that goes against your overall... If, 
you know, if you're only making four thousand a month, let's let's talk about right. an average middle America, right? Fifty thousand right. a year. You making four thousand right. a month. If right. eight hundred of that is eight hundred, eight hundred fifty of that is going towards a car, right? You know, you account that. You put in one hundred fifty bucks in insurance. Insurance that puts you at a thousand. You already took a quarter of your percentage off, and we ain't even talking about credit cards or we talk about none of that. Or quarter, right. you know what I mean? Right, right. So, so I think people need to understand that the reason why Corey and myself are always saying buy the house first is because once you buy the house, now you're established. Your yep. your at least your numbers are established. So when you go into the car dealership, they're going to look and say, oh, well, you got a $1,400 no mortgage, $1,500, yep. $1,600, whatever it is. Right, right. You're not going to, one, you're probably not going to qualify for the $850 right. note, which yep. then will make you choose something. That don't mean you can't pick a new car. That right. just means you can't go pick a new, you know, 300, 400 series BMW and right. you living in the apartment, the two bedroom apartment over there down the street. <laughs> yep, that's it. That's that, it. But that's all and, that means. And then you said the thing is, what it comes down to is, if you want to take your finances serious, it's the difference between spending majority of your money to buy a depreciating asset and spending majority of your money to buy an appreciating asset, right? Yeah. So you're saying if you're gonna purchase a home, to me. You know what I tell people is essentially a forced savings plan because yeah. every month, every month that you make a payment, you're actually pay, paying down and creating more equity within that property. Yes. So then you're in a position to where you can take advantage, like a lot of other homeowners did this year. A lot of your clients did this year. A lot of your clients was able to cash out this year. Man, yeah. my property went up this amount in a matter of a year. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying, and I can cash out and get me forty, fifty thousand dollars. By selling my property, by selling my house, you tell me somebody that bought a car, turned around and sold it a year later, and was able to make thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. Ain't nobody in America was able to do that. No, no. So you got to, you got to, you got to get your financial house in order, and that starts with prioritizing what's going to be the smart decision, what's going to help you and your family in the future, and that's going to be putting an asset in your actual uh, in your portfolio. Well, it's, Not all a about, it's all about long term. It's all about Net worth. You know, we talk about That's net worth um, from a from a different concept. We use the house as the foundational piece that we're trying to explain to many of you out there. But but I, I take it one step further and say, you know, if you have a house that you're paying on this big big asset that you're paying for, and you're paying for it consistent, that's only going to help your credit. Yeah. That's only going that's only going to boost you further. So, yep. so maybe you don't come in with the BMW. But maybe six months, a year after you in the house, maybe you can go get it in because you done drove your entry, your, your, your FICO's up because yep. you're paying this note on time. And yep. now you're getting the premium. You know, I always say I want the TV commercial interest rate. When they, you know what I'm saying? You know how they be doing it. They got the old boy with the F-150. He at the gas station. Homie, homie pointing at him from up on the hill. Come on up there. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then he go up there and they talk, and then they get a flash of the of the of the interest rate thing afterwards, you know, 0.99 interest. Or yeah. something. Like that's what I want. Because at the end right. of the day, now I can go buy a thirty, forty thousand dollar car and pay twenty thousand dollar prices because go. I got the right interest rate. We're right. doing it back. People are doing it backwards. They're doing it from the reverse end of it. They want the money, they want the car now, but don't understand how it's affecting them long term. You know, exactly. So, uh, you know, another one that that kind of comes at me that recently, <laughs> since since you know brought in some this just out of brought it up. <laughs> that, you know, the question I always have is is why why does when you think about buying a house, why don't you think about having some money? Because you know, you know, my old saying, I say it to everybody: you either got to have cash or credit, right? If you got both, great. That's really yeah. what you want. But you got to either have, you're trying to buy a big purchase, you got to either have cash or credit you know, yeah. when it comes to houses. And and I've seen more people probably in the last six months. I think some of it's due to headlines of of the headlines talk about interest rates and all that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I think they finally done got to that boat part where they're like, I better go ahead and jump on this before yeah. they start changing, right? Before, right. 
but they've done nothing in the year and a half, two years. And I, you know, I ain't talking about it. I'm just keeping it real, right? Right. Because they, right. in the year and a half, two years, they haven't saved anything. They don't got yeah. any money. They show up. You know, you, people still got to, you got to remember when you're buying a house, and you said this once to, to a couple of clients, you got earnest money. That's yeah. usually 1% of the purchase price. Yeah. You still got inspections. That's right. usually three to 500 bucks. You got appraisal. That's four yeah. to 600 bucks. So even at a minimum, if you ain't got no other money, you still uh, need about three. Yeah. Right. Just, you know, for the, if you look at the average selling price of 250, uh-huh. that other stuff on there of a thousand, you got to have at least three, three, three to four thousand dollars just to get started. Just you know off the month. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then, then the other side that I want to pass off to you and ask is why are people familiar with 401k? Because I know that uh, in, in almost 90% of the 401ks I've ever dealt with, mm-hmm. buying a house is a a exception to pulling out money. They allow you to pull out money. It's a qualifying purchase, but a lot of people don't understand that they can pull it out of their 401k. Can you dig into that a little bit? Yeah, so I don't necessarily know why people, you know, there's a difference between like a 401k or maybe a pension of some sort. So the example that I like to use is like for teachers and TRS. Teachers have the TRS that they actually put into, not necessarily a 401k, but it is a retirement plan. They don't allow for you to actually take that money out of the TRS, but there is the 403B. There's some other retirement options that you are able to take money out of. And when I have clients come to me beforehand, what I like to tell them is, hey, look, we don't necessarily want to take that money out, right? Because if you have a 401k and you take that money out, you not only have to pay tax on that stuff at the end of the year because you've taken it out early, but you also be, have to sometimes, in some cases, pay penalties. Talk to your, your my disclaimer is talk to your CPA, talk to a tax person about it. Mm-hmm. But you will have to pay some sort of penalty. So off the off the bat, by the end of the year, you're probably out of 40, 50 percent of the money that you end up taking out. That's going to eat into your tax return for the following year when you get ready to file. What I tell people is take out a loan against that money. If you take out a loan against that money, what people don't understand is you're not paying a bank back. You're paying yourself back. So you're paying yourself back plus interest in order to put that money back into your account to prepare yourself for retirement, prepare yourself for the future. But it's allowed for you to actually take that money out 100 percent and not pay taxes because you don't pay taxes on borrowed money. So if you take and use that as collateral to take that money out, here it is, you have your house, and now you have a monthly payment that you that they're taking from your paycheck anyway, and you're paying yourself back to replenish your 401k, which you were doing that anyway, or should be doing that, you yeah. know? Um, so I don't necessarily know why people don't necessarily think about that, and I understand why some people that's getting closer to retirement don't do it, but at the end of the day, if you compare apples to apples, if you compare you renting a place, and essentially getting no return for paying a monthly payment on that rental price that you have and taking that 401k money and paying towards something that you actually own, it just makes more sense to pay towards something that you actually own. If you take $1,000 or $1,500 of, of, of rent that you're paying on a monthly basis, you multiply that by 12, that money is gone if you're paying it on rent. Well, look. As my old saying goes, might just dump it in a garbage can, put some gasoline on it, and light it on fire. And set it on fire. Gone. You ain't never going to see it again. You get nothing of that back. So you are saying, but from a financial standpoint, if you have your own property and you're paying that monthly payment, you're going to see that back in equity. You're mm-hmm. building equity within that property. And, um, and, uh, and people just need to understand and know that it make, makes sense of it. And, you know, the other thing is this, too, is that what I tell people is you have to educate yourself on the pros and cons of every single choice that you make. So you're renting. You have mom, dad, cousin, sister, brother. That's all they've ever known is renting. So they're telling you, man, you might as well just rent for the rest of your life. I've been renting all my life. You know what I'm saying? Why would you want to buy a house? You got this, that, and the third, or whatever the case may be. But they just may not have the education to know the better option is to purchase a house for yourself. 
So it's not that they necessarily are giving you advice to intentionally put you in a bad position or intentionally not see you make a better decision. That's just all their know. That's as far as their education will take them to let them to let them think that that's a better option. So when people start to do the education, they start to dig a little bit and find out the pros and cons of both. It's like day and night. It's like, okay, well, now that I know the pros and cons of both, hell, the best option is for me to have my own home. Yeah. Like, it's a no-brainer. Well, and you know what it's like? It's like, it's like when we talk about the, you know, <laughs> people hate this line when they say, you know, the rich just get richer. Well, the rich kid keeps getting rich because they keep staying ahead of the curve and stay smart about it, and yeah. they keep doing it. As much as whether you, we love it or hate it, right? Yep. They just yeah. keep doing, they're going to keep stretching the line, they're going to keep playing in the gray area because they keep educating themselves. And so yeah. then I look at people like with, with Challenge Credit, which I, I was vowing not to talk about credit on here, but <laughs> as, as usual, I got to hard not to. You're it. right. But, you know, it's a passionate part for me. Because I think about when I bought my house. When I bought my house, I didn't have good credit. I had to educate myself. And this was old school. Like, this wasn't like today where you got all these apps and you got all these different things you can do. You got bankers that you can get on Zoom. I mean, you got the, the, the stuff you got. If I had this, when I did mine 20 years ago, or whatever it was, uh -huh. 25 years ago, uh -huh. I'd be going crazy right now. I'd be a millionaire. You know what I mean? Right, but, right. But I think about how much we I had to go through in regards to and, and I just I did it manually so you know yeah. pull the credit report okay let me go line by line let me call this person let me do this let me dispute that let me do I mean we got companies that do that now as you know I know you work with some I got my own mm -hmm. that I deal with that, mm -hmm. that does some of this for you I'd say right. all, all that to say this is that at the end of the day if you want more for your life you gotta do it yeah. You can't expect somebody, you just can't get hope that you're gonna get lucky. Like yeah. I know people, I know people in my life right now, I talk to them all the time, and they just they're just waiting for the luck to happen. And yeah. at the end of the day, I wanted a house. I had never lived mm -hmm. in the house, my mom didn't own the house. You know, I got family member after family member that didn't own property when I went right. to buy my house. Like, um, it was like an unforeseen thing when I bought my house. They thought I was like the richest man in the world. And I was sitting there like, you know, Corey, I'm sitting there like, uh, no, <laughs> I just know about Morgan. I just understand the price. Right. That's all it was. I just understood. And, and this is the kicker for me. I was already paying 15, 1600 bucks a month. Yep. You know, because as you grow and as your family grows and stuff like that, you need a bigger place. And I, I mean, right. So I was already paying a mortgage yep. for years. And even yep. when I was in rent houses, I, yep. and, you know, and I think back to all the time I lost. That's the part yeah. that I that I'm try, I try and get clients to understand is I think about the time I lost. I could have owned a house 10 years before that problem or at least right. five. You right. know what I mean? Because right. we was making money. We was working. We was doing what we needed to do. We just didn't know what we didn't know. And so that's right. why what we doing and how we talking about this, we try to educate everyone out there to understand and give you some of the stuff that you don't know right. to at least spark the, the thought where you're like, hey, well, let me call them or let me call somebody. Let me look on the Google. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Google, I'm planting that seed for you, Google. <laughs> give us a little sponsorship. A little talk, talk. yeah. <laughs> but you, you, you go on and, and you start the process of, of thinking about it. My, I think the most exciting thing for me, and you tell me about you, Corey, I think the most exciting thing to me, I love, don't get me wrong, I love working with my, my buyers that have bought houses. and done, But my, it's very exciting for me when I'm working with a first-time home buyer. Yeah. And they're younger. Or they're, you know, even they're older. I mean, it really don't matter age from right. standpoint, but mindset wise, they're like, I'm determined to do this. What do we need to do? You know what right. I mean? And, yeah, you know, and, and I think that's the most exciting thing, at least for me in my career. You know, like I said, I love my sellers. I love my, my buyers that have bought two, three houses, but that first time home buyer, you know, let me show you some resources. Let me give you some things to help you along the way. Right. And it's there. It's there waiting for you. You just got to ask for it and come get it. 
Yeah, it's the excitement of the first time home buyers that's that kind of get the adrenaline pumping. You know what I mean? Because they're motivated. Like, hey, look, this is my first house, my first house mm-hmm. ever, and I just want to make sure I'm doing everything the right way to mm-hmm. be able to get in it and make it a smooth process. And then once you get up to the closing table, they get them keys, the appreciation oh, on their yeah. face and the emotion that's on their face. Now, you know, and, it, and like you said, you're saying like we 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 love every single client, right? But it's just the 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 milestone that you know mm-hmm. I'm saying a first time home buyer hits, you know, when they actually purchase a home, it's it's just like no other. Yeah. Second, and, second and, and the funny home. part about it is anybody can be a first time home buyer. Yeah. I think that's I think that's the I think that's the forgotten or maybe that's the hidden hidden concept there is is if you're renting, no matter what you're renting, I mean if you're renting a thousand dollar rental apartment, now it's gonna be mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because finding right. that that price property, right? Per se, you know, we're right. talking about a thousand dollars. That's a hundred thirty thousand dollar property. You know, so right. you, they're out there, but right. they're definitely not a five bedroom game room. You right. know what I'm saying? Because right. you tell me I want a thousand, I'm gonna pay a thousand a month. Yep. And 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 then tell me you want to live in the heights. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that that ain't happening. What's you you know, doing? You got to have some realism there, some realistic uh, goals and expectations there. But it, but any, I, I'm a firm believer that anybody that is renting, if you can pay rent on time all the time, then you can pay a mortgage all the time. Yep. You know what I mean? There's no difference between the two other than ownership. That's yep. the only difference. Is yep. If you're paying rent, you're paying somebody else's house off for them. Exactly. And they exactly. get the benefits. If you exactly. if you buy paying your own mortgage, you get the benefits. That's the only difference in the big scheme of things. And then this was funny, Corey. We ain't even talk about tax write-offs or any of the other stuff that any of those in, that gives you more savings. Right. But you got to start that process. You know, man. I, I think most people don't necessarily think about different ways to kind of better their financial position. And what I mean by that is, you know I'm saying, uh, I recently had some clients come to me and a, a, a lady was actually purchasing a house with her cousin. She's mm-hmm. like, look, me and my cousin were close. You know, we pretty much, I'm either at her spot all the time or she's at mine, whatever the case may be. We pretty much, you know, do everything together, whatever the case may be. Um, so we want to put ourselves in a position where we're sick and tired of renting. We're sick and tired, sick and tired of being inside a house where somebody else is dictating what we can and can't do. And uh, if something breaks, they don't fix it, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And then we have to spend our own money towards a house that we don't even own. You know what I mean? Yeah. So she's yeah. just like, look, we're to the point now where we just want to go purchase a home. So they said, look, we're going to go in this thing together because our purchasing power together is going to be greater than us individually. So we're going to go in together, purchase this house, and then be able to reap the benefits down the road. So I say that to say, you know, even if you're working, you're working hard, you know what I'm saying, you're only making $2,500 a month or whatever the case may be, gross. Mm -hmm. Um, You're still in a position to where you can actually partner with somebody. And and most people think I have to buy a house with my husband or I have to buy a house with my my wife, my fiance, Mm -hmm. my boyfriend, like, it, it, or my mom, or it has to be some kind of close relation there in order to purchase a house with somebody. People don't even think I could purchase a house with anybody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like yeah. the biggest thing is to be able to get into a property and be able to take advantage of this, this strong appreciation that we have going on in oh. this market and then be able to reap the benefits down the road. It's nothing for y'all to be able to sell that property. Somebody, you know, one of the cousins end up getting, getting a, 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 a serious fiance or whatever. They end up, they want to go buy their own stuff now. Okay, well, cool. Now this cousin can refinance, give me my equity out and keep the property, or we can sell the property ourselves. Now we have $30,000, $40,000 each. You can go buy your own house now and I can go live my life with, my, with you know, the, the next stage of my life. I can go on to the next stage of my life. So there's always ways to get things done. It doesn't have to be a traditional way. You just have to try to figure out what works for you. But the biggest thing is to be able to get into a house. Well, and the beauty behind that is you get all that extra FICO score. <laughs> you uh-huh. know, I go yep. back to your credit. You both cousins' credit just got boosted because they've been paying yep. on the mortgage. 
And yep. I, I believe that, you know, from my personal opinion, I always say there's a little bit more accountability mm -hmm. difference yeah. between if it's two cousins or two really close friends right. about paying your part than yeah. it is necessarily with, you know, husband and wife, hey, we in this together. If I don't, you know, like, right. <laughs> look, like, <laughs> like that one client told me, he said, hey, I would just let it go on back to the uh, bank. <laughs> What do you mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but you know what I'm saying? Is is right. is if it's somebody else, you know, because that's the part that everybody start getting worried about. Well, I I gotta make sure I'm gonna pay my part. Hey, yeah. I got my money, you got yours. Right. I'll tell you the truth, right. somebody like me, I'm gonna make sure I got my part and your part sitting right. on the backside, because I'm not gonna let my credit get jacked. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so there's a lot of this is a little more complicated, of course. But at the uh, end of the day, you know, I'm you know I'm sending out my letters to my my clients clients right now. Every quarter, I send out a market analysis on their property. Uh, I got a client that just bought their house. Now we in uh, November. They bought uh, they they closed on their house November of 2020. Okay. Uh, I just uh, wrote them a letter showing them that they got a forty thousand dollar in almost forty thousand dollar increase. Come on now. Come Between on now. One year. This is one year. Now, this is uncommon, but this is just one year. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. You sit there thinking, I'm thinking to myself as I'm talking to myself, as I'm sending it to them, I'm like, they, they might be ready to sell and, and buy their dream house. Right. Because, you know, they, they, they was about $50,000 off. Right. From what they, what the dream house is, dream what they house. really want. Right. Right. And, and I'm sitting there like, man. We could either sell this one, you know what I mean, and, and get the next one and do the step up in right. less than two years. You know what I mean? That's yep. unheard of. And, and yeah. people aren't taking advantage of that fact. That's that's right. the issue is, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like the stocks, right? You uh, see this, you see this bell curve happening with the stock, right? And yep. everybody's sitting there like, man, should I not? you thinking about it? Should I get on it? Should I buy some? And it's steadily ticking up. And then uh -huh. right when it gets start getting toward the top, you're like, all right, I'm gonna go. And that's when it go over the top. Go, yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you're like, why didn't I buy it when I first thought about it? Why didn't uh -huh. I buy it? Why did I, I would have made X amount of dollars or whatever? Yeah. You know, yeah. It, you know? and, and I think the and, same thing with houses. I think people think I, I think a lot of people do think about buying a house. Or yeah. think about, you know, or it crosses their mind because I, I think there's too much on TV for them yeah. not to. You know, you're right. even just watching HGTV shows. You're sitting there like, right. hey, I like that kitchen. You know what I right. mean? Yeah. There's too much now that they don't, if they're in an apartment watching it or rent a house, especially right. rent a house where the owner ain't taking care of it, they're yep. sitting there like, I want to buy a house. I should buy it. So I know it crosses people's minds, but I don't know All the time. what it would take for them to get to that next step. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I think a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, people think, man, because of my position that I'm in, you know what I'm saying? I had some stumbles. I had some falls. I had some collection stuff come up. I had some late pays come up. You know, it'll take me forever to be able to get into a house, right? But what a lot of people don't understand is you may not be as far as you think. Because you're saying just natural human instinct, you are automatically thinking the worst of everything. Oh man, I ain't gonna never be able to get a house. But you're saying you don't understand that you might be right around the corner to get a house. Just mm -hmm. like it was a process for you to get your credit where it is now, you know, four, five hundred, whatever the case may be, it's gonna be a process, but it has to be a conscious process in order to get your score up. And then you can get your score up and then eventually you can be able to get into the house. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. It's kind of like that saying used to go, you know what I'm saying, better late than never. Yes. I'd rather you be late to the party rather than never come at all. Yes. So like you're saying, just take the steps, find out exactly what you need to do, take those steps and be conscious about it. Be disciplined about it and get there, you know what I'm saying, and then get your house. I promise you it's the more, one of the most rewarding feelings in the world. Yes, yes. Well, well, well hey, I'm a... I think well, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna get us wrapped up. Oh, you know, we didn't get dropped a couple nuggets on here. We got now that we back in back in motion. We gonna we might put <laughs> a couple more of these together here. What's, yes, what's the last thing you want to say to everybody out there? Because the, what I kind of got the concept of on this one was really it can't. Bottom line is it comes down to taking the steps. You're yeah. never late. You never you never 
there's never never in buying a house. Right. You right. just got to start go. taking steps to move forward and and let the resources help you. Let people yep. like Corey, let people like me, like your banker, you know, not saying not to listen, listen to your family, but I'm going to go to the person that does own a house yeah. in the family. I'm not going to go to the one that's always, you know, it's kind of like what I told one of my family bills. I'm not going to go to the other broke person in the family. I'm right. going to go to the one that's making some money if I right. want to find out how to make money. You know what I mean? Right. If I want to open there my own go. business, I'm going to go to the person that actually has opened the business and is yep. successful versus talking to Johnny on the block that right. ain't never opened the business, ain't tried to open, but he got an opinion. You know, you yep. know what I mean? Yeah. Because so, he's always you know, going to have the take. broke person that's going to, it's always the broke person that's going to have the opinion about what you need to do to make money. <laughs> it's just like, but you broke. Like you just asked me $500 the other day. Like, what do you mean? Like, how are you going to tell me how to make money? Yeah. You know what I'm it, it goes back to the saying where it's just like you're know saying, you don't go to the plumber to come fix your electric at the house. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has their lane that they're in. If they haven't been there before, you shouldn't be listening to them. Yeah. And even if they have been there before, you have to understand that things change. Like, I can't go to mom that bought a house back in 1983, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and, and talk about, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to have the same experiences that they had then in 2021. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. They may have a little bit of knowledge to give to you, but they're not necessarily in the field. So they may not necessarily understand. They're going to miss a lot or may misinform you a lot. You need to get with some people that stay up to date and find out the real, the real deal on what's going on and how far and what steps you need to take in order to get you inside that house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, hey, man, this is a good one, man. This is another, yeah. you know, get a couple shots out there for, for them there to go. go pick up on, you know. You yep. know what I mean? We're going to have to get back on this next week and and, and get back in the routine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I get it. I know you, I, you've been busy crazy. I've been crazy busy, too. And hey, we both have been. So, yeah, yeah. Which is good. We've been putting people in houses, you know, there but you at the end of the day, I want to make sure that people getting some knowledge out there from what we're saying out there, especially the people that need it. Because at the end of the day, the people that are making money, that's already got good credit, you know, they might need a little shove. Is yeah. the people that the people we're talking to out there yeah. a lot of times is the people with challenge credit, people that's renting, people that don't think they can get it, right. and that we're trying to tell you you can. You just got to okay. come and do the work and let and let go. us help you get there, and we'll there get you, you there. So, but uh, as always, it's great talking to you, boss. You know what I mean? If Likewise, you, if you know where I'm at. It's real quick. Shoot your uh, number down on the box yes. so that they can uh, uh you can, they can know where how to contact you. Yeah, y'all need anything, any questions, whatever the case may be. No questions too small. There's no such things as dumb questions, especially when you're trying to get an answer to get towards your goal. Uh, my number is 832-297-7659. And then if you want to shoot me an email, because sometimes, you know, people get a little anxious and stuff, you know, they're a little nervous about giving a phone call or whatever the case may be, just shoot me an email with your questions. My email is csmith at cmgfi dot com and then i'll get those questions answered for you and of course i'm walter davis you can reach me at 832-257-9083 with any real estate questions or if you need to get in touch with Corey, you know he's one of my guys i can always get you over to him or if you need some credit help of course i got a credit company that i can uh, get you in front of as well my email is walter b as in boy davis at kw.com as always, we'll see you guys next time, and God bless to everybody out there. All right, see. Hey, tell the family right. I said, hey. Likewise. Likewise.